Hi guys. Welcome to another African folktale story. Please subscribe for more videos. And thanks for watching, The Chief's Forbidden Bride, a shocking betrayal that shook the village in the heart of the sprawling savanna, under the gaze of the baobab trees, lay the village of Kambili. It was a prosperous community where traditions held the people together like the unbreakable roots of the African mahogany. Kambili was led by the respected and feared Chief Omari, who had ruled for over two decades with an iron hand and a sharp mind. Chief Omari was not just a leader, he was a symbol of order and discipline. People whispered his name in reverence. But, like all men, he had weaknesses, one of which was his insatiable desire for power. And to keep that power in his family, he had arranged for his only son, Kofi, to marry the daughter of a neighboring chief. The marriage would ensure an alliance that would make Chief Omari's lineage invincible. Kofi, however, had his own plans. He was young, handsome, and wild at heart. He had fallen madly in love with a woman who was the complete opposite of the cold and politically advantageous bride his father had chosen for him. Her name was Amina. Amina was the daughter of a commoner, a widow named Mama Zola who had raised her daughter with nothing but hard work and dignity. Amina was beautiful beyond words, her dark skin glowed like the rich earth after a rain, and her laugh was like the song of the wind. But there was more to her than beauty, she had a sharp mind and a kind heart that drew Kofi in like a moth to the flame, they met in secret under the shade of the sacred tree, where the ancestors were said to whisper wisdom to the living. Their love bloomed like wildflowers, and soon, the two lovers made a pact, they would run away together before the planned wedding, but secrets in Kambili were like smoke, they always found a way to escape, it wasn't long before rumors reached Chief Omori's ears. His spies had followed Kofi to the sacred tree, where he had been seen whispering sweet words to a woman who was not his bride-to-be. Omori's blood boiled. A commoner's daughter. It was a scandal that could ruin his plans for power. This betrayal, he thought, was unforgivable. Chief Omari summoned Kofi in front of the council, the elders, and the entire village. He publicly shamed his son, calling him disloyal and reckless. The whole village held its breath as the young prince stood before his father, his face pale but his eyes blazing with defiance, I will not marry the woman you've chosen for me, Kofi declared, his voice shaking with emotion. I love Amina, and I will make her my bride. The crowd gasped. To defy the chief so openly was unheard of. The elders murmured among themselves, wondering how such rebellion could be dealt with without causing more division. Chief Omori's face grew red with rage. You will marry who I say. Do you think love is more important than duty? Than loyalty to your bloodline? Kofi stood tall. Love is loyalty. Amina is the woman who has my heart, and I will not betray that. For a moment, there was a heavy silence. And then, Chief Omari, in his fury, made a decision that would shock everyone. If you choose Amina, you will no longer be my son, his part. I disown you. You will be exiled from this village and stripped of your title. The villagers stood in stunned silence. Exile was a fate worse than death, for it meant complete isolation from one's people, a severing of ties to the land and the ancestors. Kofi looked his father in the eye and though his heart ached, he stood by his love. Then so be it. I choose Amina. Without another word, Kofi turned and walked away from the village, leaving behind everything he had ever known. Amina, who had been watching from the shadows, ran to his side. Together, they fled into the night, to a future uncertain but filled with hope years past. Chief Omari grew older, and though his village prospered, there was a void in his life. Kofi's exile had left a scar on his heart that power and wealth could not heal. The alliance he had sought with the neighboring chief through the arranged marriage had fallen apart when Kofi's betrayal became public. And in his loneliness, Omori began to reflect on his life and the choices he had made. One evening, as the sun set behind the mountains, a messenger came running into the village. Chief Omari, there is a man at the edge of the village who seeks an audience with you. Curious and slightly apprehensive, Omari ordered the man to be brought before him. When the man arrived, the chief could hardly believe his eyes. It was Kofi. He was older, wiser, and though he had lived in exile, there was a dignity about him that made him seem more regal than ever. Kofi, Omari whispered, 
his voice breaking. I have come not for myself, but for Amina, Kofi said, his voice calm and steady. She is dying. Her only wish is to return to her mother's village, to be buried among her ancestors. Chief Omari was stunned. All the years of anger and pride melted away. He realized. In that moment, how foolish he had been. In his quest for power, he had driven away the one thing that truly mattered, his family. And now, Amina, the woman his son had loved so dearly, was slipping away, without hesitation, Omari gathered the elders and the villagers. He declared that Kofi and Amina were to be welcomed back into the village, not as exiles, but as heroes who had taught the village the most important lesson of all, when Kofi and Amina returned to Kambili, the village held a great ceremony in their honor. Amina, though weak, smiled as she was carried to the sacred tree, where her love story with Kofi had begun. Under the shade of the tree, surrounded by the people of the village, she passed peacefully, Chief Omari, his heart heavy with regret, stood before the people and spoke. I have learned a painful lesson. Power, status, and tradition mean nothing if we do not honor the love that binds us. I thought I was preserving my family's legacy, but I was destroying it with my pride. Let us never forget that love, compassion, and respect for one another are more important than anything else. The story of Kofi and Amina became legend in Kambili. It was a reminder to all who had it that love is stronger than power, that humility is greater than pride, and that true leadership lies not in controlling others but in understanding and embracing what truly matters. Moral of the story, in today's world, where ambition and status often seem to take precedence, this story reminds us that love, compassion, and authenticity are more valuable than power or material gain. Choosing what is right, even when it goes against societal expectations, is the mark of true courage. Thank you.